Hello everyone, I'm P. Ulibre. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to discuss rollers. Uh, I find them super fascinating, uh, why they act the way they do. We've discussed a little bit about uh, why discs turn and fade, um, several other subjects, grip. Today I want to discuss rollers. I think it's a super fascinating subject. So the first couple things we need to understand are the forces that are at play when we throw a disc and when it's rolling. First off, we always have gravity. Gravity is always operating downwards as a line through the disc. So think of a line, an arrow pointing downwards. It's always pulling the disc down. Second is when we throw a disc, we begin to generate lift. So lift is acting upwards. Think of an arrow going upwards, upwards against the force of gravity. And that sustains it for quite a while during its flight. The other is airspeed. The faster we throw a disc, the more lift we tend to generate, depending on the disc we're throwing. The next one is spin. Spin is a major component as to why discs fly. Because of gyroscopic precession, uh, the force that would typically cause a disc to be unstable and lift and flip out of the sky, that force is transferred 90 degrees away in the direction of rotation. This causes the disc to always be fighting against the, those forces and remaining stable and flying in the sky. So the more spin we have, the more a disc resists off-axis torque. So there's a basic rule with the gyroscope that whatever input or torque we put into the gyroscopic system, the effect takes place 90 degrees away in the direction of rotation. Several other videos we've talked about that a little bit. To recap, let's go like this. So we spin the disc. If I push down on the back of the disc, you would probably expect the nose to go up. But because of a um, gyroscopic precession, that right side of the disc from your perspective would go up. Uh, any force that comes into this against the system of a disc rotating that is not in line with the direction of rotation or with the plane of rotation would be considered off axis. So a simple thing next that we need to understand is the RPMs of a disc, revolutions per minute. When I throw a disc backhand, it has a certain amount of spin that I impart on it. It also has its airspeed, how fast I actually threw the disc. So when I throw a disc, I tend to throw about 60 miles an hour. That means that my RPMs, and my RPMs are typically around 1200 RPMs maximum right now. That means my RPMs, if I were to spin up the disc to 1200 RPMs and put it on the ground, attach it to a car or something, my disc would travel on the ground at 1200 RPMs at 30 miles an hour. That's what that equals out to. But when I throw a disc at 60, that means it's spinning slower than it's, it, than it's actually traveling over the ground. So if I were to take the same disc, let's double its RPMs so that 30 miles an hour turns into 60 miles an hour, we'd have 2,400 RPMs. So when a disc, we throw a roller and the disc hits the ground, takes on the RPMs that are equal to its speed that is traveling, it's going to practically double its RPMs. When we spin a disc fast, the disc will tend to resist any input of off-axis torque, any force that we impart into that system that is not on the direction or the plane of rotation, it's going to resist it more. So a disc with more spin is not gonna turn over as much, it's not gonna fade as much. So what this means for us is when we throw a disc and we throw it on a roller line, the disc is gonna hit the ground. And when it hits the ground, it is now in contact with another force. So let's remember, a disc still always has gravity acting upon it. Gravity is always pulling down on the disc. We also have the disc has lift. In this case, the lift would be lifting upwards with the disc in flight. Uh, when we throw an Anheuser, the disc is lifting on an Anheuser line. When we throw it on a Heiser line, the disc is lifting in this plane. So, so when we throw a disc and we land it on the ground as a roller, gravity is still acting downwards on it. This is represented by our arrow here. Uh, well, lift is still acting upon the disc. Just because a disc is on the ground doesn't negate its flight properties. It just introduces a new force to what's going on. So now we have a disc that is rolling. Its lift is pulling this direction. Gravity is pulling down. And now we have to understand what are the forces it's feeling on the ground and how are those forces interacting with the gyroscopic precession of the disc. So if we have a disc that is lifting greater than the force of gravity pulling down against it, and now its fulcrum is here, not its center. It still has lift, it still has turn, it still has fade. 
but now it has this new thing introduced into it, which has a lot of effect on it. So the disc is lifting this direction. If the lift is greater than the force of gravity, it's going to be lifting in this direction. And now that it's touching the ground, it's gra the ground is pushing back against it in this direction. Okay. So since the ground is pushing downwards or back against it in this direction, it's going to receive a force this way. So let's turn it around for you. Our arrow over here is going to be purple because I have it colored. Uh, so now you throw in a roller out. It's moving away from you in this rotation. Gravity is acting downwards on it. Here we go. Gravity is acting downwards. We have lift. And then that lift, because the fulcrum point is now down below here, we have the ground pushing back against it on this way. So what happens when, gra when, when the ground is pushing, the force it's feeling is this direction? Well, if we push down on the lid here, the effect, because of gyroscopic recession, is going to feel the effect of it pushing downwards here. So let's look at that from your perspective. As the disc is rolling away from you, it's lifting this way. The effect of that force that it's feeling on the ground transfers to this place, and it begins lifting the nose. And as it lifts the nose, it's what happens when we throw a disc nose upwards? Well, it wants to lift and turn. Well, it lifts, lifts the nose, and that nose begins to continue to turn, and this disc then begins to lift and turn towards the top. If we throw a cut roller, a really interesting thing about the cut roller is that, let's do our same exact thing here. We have gravity. Gravity is always pulling down on the disc. We'll turn it this way so we can see it again. Gravity is always pulling downwards on the disc. Lift is pulling up on the disc. But if our lift is not greater than the force of gravity, and our lift is just enough to hold it here, but not enough to pull that top to create a force pressing this direction against the top of the disc, where it's going to feel as if it's getting pushed against the top of the disc. Now, the disc is feeling the weight pushing down. Well, now that the disc has gravity pushing down, it's going to feel the ground pushing upwards on it. So if the ground is pushing upwards against the bottom of the disc because lift isn't overcoming that force and pushing it this way, then what happens if we push upwards on the disc? Let's take it from your perspective. If we push upwards on this point of the disc, it's, that effect is not going to just cut the leg of the disc out. 90 degrees up the chain, it's going to push upwards on the tail of the disc from your perspective. And when it starts pushing upwards on the tail of the disc, the nose of the disc will begin to turn this direction and the disc will remain in cut, a cut roller. So the cut roller will chase away and stay turning towards the lid or towards the base, I should say. So that's the really interesting thing about what, go, what happens with these. Um, what might change is if you throw a disc that's really flippy, then you have more lift acting on the disc. When you have more lift acting on the disc, it wants to stand up and push against the ground this way. That fulcrum point then transfers it. And so you're going to have a disc that actually you can lay on a lot of angle because the lift is constantly working harder against gravity. And that force is felt as a force this direction on the disc. The nose is going to then begin to cause it to stand up and make the turn. But if you throw something really overstable that doesn't generate much lift in its flight properties, you're going to find that it doesn't have the ability to create more lift than the force of gravity on it. And because of gyroscopic stability, it's going to remain in cut. And that force is going to feel is the force of ground pushing upwards on the base of the disc, which is going to cause 90 degrees away it to remain in cut. So there you have it. That's the basic physics of what's going on with the roller. I find it super fascinating. Does it help me throw better rollers? I don't know. Uh, I just enjoy the knowledge of what's going on behind it. Um, I like understanding why this flip, why they turn, the physics behind what's going on. It helps me understand when I made a mistake or when it's actually something going on out there that was outside of my control. Um, these are the physics of flight. I really enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy it too. I'm fascinated by it. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.